Name another podcast like this. Who gon' bring it to the table? Boss talk. Who your girlfriend favorite? Boss talk. We gon' do it how you want it. Boss talk. Yeah, everybody on it. Boss talk. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official, Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. You know, my dad walk on. But I want y'all to, to stop what you're doing right, right now. Go ahead, like, subscribe, follow, share. You know the tactics. You know what to do. If y'all like our content, like what we're doing, just go ahead and do that for us. But we're all, for full-length interviews, y'all already know. If you want to see them, because some people like them, some people don't. But if you want to see them, go to our Patreon channel. Go to our YouTube membership. And that's where you're going to see our full-length interview before anybody else. So sign up for our membership, and you get a full exclusive content before everybody. All right? Thank you for the support. Man, hold up. You get the content for everybody. Y'all heard us. Everybody going to get some of this content, man. You know what I'm saying? We show our prayer that everybody been liking what we've been doing, right? Like and subscribing to the channel. Um, man, this guy right here really don't need no introduction, man. Um, this guy been around, man, in the South doing hip hop mm -hmm. for us for a long time, man. He one of the originators, man. All this, the real. Hey, listen, man, I love going down the rabbit hole and finding out about old Mobo Joe, man. What's All going on, baby? What's going on, my baby? Pleasure to be here. Man, I, I man, listen, man, you don't watch no boss talk, man. Stop playing, man. Man, come on, man. I'm a boss. I'm a boss. I'm a boss. <laughs> Bosses flock together, right or wrong. Man, they definitely do, man. Yes, Thank sir. you so much for coming on our show, man. Blessing our You're platform, welcome. man. Yeah, yeah. For sure, for sure. Man, we're going to get into it, man. I really, like I said, I want, we, we always go a certain way. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to pass it out, pass the torch to Miss Jamaica and let her uh, take us down through that, 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 that. Where are we going with it? Yes, can we know? On my club. <laughs> so, man, Jamaica, man. I've been there a few times, man. Really love it? Love it, love it. Well, move there, get some property really? there, man. Yes. Is it, is, do you think it's very similar to New Orleans somewhat? Somewhat, somewhat, somewhat. What are the similarities? Good food and um, the people, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, I had a, I had a good time there, a real good time. Because did you know that just like how New Orleans is separated in parishes, Jamaica is also separated in parishes Oh, as I didn't well. know that. Yeah. I didn't know that. No, but just it, let I, you know. I mean, it's beautiful over there, yeah. Man. So um, you were born and raised, of course, in New Orleans, right? Well, Harvey, Louisiana, right outside New Orleans. The West okay. Bank. So not so, because everybody loves to say New Orleans for a lot of the stuff. Because I noticed y'all accents are a lot different. Why is New Orleans accent? But your accent sounds so much like everybody in New Orleans compared to Louisiana. Um, I don't know, man. I've been there all my life, so I guess <laughs> I was born this way. I guess I don't know. So how many siblings? Ooh, we had a that big family. Like a lot. Yeah, believe it or not. My mom and my dad had seven boys and seven girls. I'm the youngest. Together? All of them. All of us got the same mother and father. Oh, my! if yes. I had a hat, a my hat go off to mama. Mama strong. Mm. Mama real good. Yeah, I lost my dad when I was like about 16. My oh, mom, okay. I lost my mom like about four years ago, though. Mm. And you mm. said you were the baby boy? Baby. I'm the youngest of all. Of my all. all. So you spoiled brat. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So, um... What was it like being raised with so many kids in the same household with your mom and dad? Man, my childhood was so much of fun when I was a kid. It was, it was so, it was, it was like, like, you know, we had a big family, so we had a, a nice house. My dad always had his own businesses and stuff like that. So, like, you know, back then. So you, you had know, money? Oh, we had, yeah. It was middle oh, okay. class. So it would, I guess they would call it middle class. My dad had, was a um, school bus driver, his own, his own school bus, but he did landscape and he had trash trucks and stuff like that. So, you know, back then, when people had weddings and wedding receptions, all that was at the house. Mm. So, you know, but we having a big family all the time, it was right there at the house, mm -hmm, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? They're like most of every Saturday, I had one sister, she was a Jehovah's Witness, mm -hmm. so they used to always come by on Saturday. She had like about three, about four daughters so everybody used to come by the house on Saturdays, but yeah, the best childhood. What? What? Did, okay, so your oldest sibling is how much older than you? I got a niece older than me. <laughs> so let's just say that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so um, what could you tell me about your dad, other than being an entrepreneur, that really stood out to you, that really, you know, a lesson that he taught you from a young kid growing up that stuck with you? My dad is the main reason why I'm a boss. You know what I'm saying? Cause like when I was young, 
for some reason now I see it. He used to always bring me to the bank with him. He used to bring me, like, he used to go buy machines and all that. And he used to always make me come. You know what I'm saying? And now that I'm older, I see why he was doing that. Mm -hmm. But, like, the thing for me, like, when I was raised up, it was I was raised in a village. Mm -hmm. Because, like, every family back there had a mother and a father. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And you respected every adult in that village like a mother and a father. Right. And I like to say the village still is saying the hood because when I was raised up, it's outside of New Orleans. It's like a rural neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So, like, my dad and the, and the older guys, like, they put civilization there. They cut their own streets out. They did all this stuff. You That's know what I'm saying? That's good. Yeah, from the butlers on up. Let me ask you a question, man, because you said something that really stuck out to me when you said it. Uh, you said your dad was a bus driver. And what's been in the media really is uh, this Ebony K. Williams said that uh, she was like um, she would not date a bus driver. But you said that a bus driver is a boss. And I think that's dope that you would yeah. say that because in the climate we in today, women are looking at regular nine to five workers no. like they like they like like they're not even uh, up to par to even date. That's how this the yeah. social media have them looking at it. So. How could you call your dad being a bus driver a boss? Well, I can say this here. We never had a mortgage on our house. We never had a car note. You know what I'm saying? We never missed a meal. You see what I'm saying? So it's like he had his own, he, he drove a bus, he owned a bus, and he had, you know, trash trucks and stuff like that. And he knew how to go to the bank and take care of, you know, business and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Them, them, them folks back then, like, they believed in ownership. You know what I'm saying? Like lane and stuff like that. Like I had a property when I was 18 years old. Wow. That was the first thing I bought. But you, you see, that just like when you're saying all of that, it almost reminds me like what he was saying is like, don't judge a book by its cover. Someone seeing a person driving a bus thinking that you're just working for Mr. Sam over here doing that, but you said he owned the bus. Exactly. You said he had more businesses. But a lot of women, not all women, but some women would, just because you're driving the bus, they assume that, oh, you ain't got it. You ain't I this. I say it like this. My mama never worked a day in her life, right? She wore mink coats and far coats in the back. Wow. Back then, in them days. You know what I'm saying? She had every hat because her hats was out for the old women for church and all mm -hmm. that. She, she never worked a day in her life. She couldn't work. She had 14 kids. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what my grandmother had 14 as well. Yeah, she had 14. But yeah. I mean, nine boys dad, and five girls. I mean, what did you Seven, uh, seven and seven. Seven and seven. seven. Okay, that's yeah, hard. Seven and seven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, and their relationship. How was their relationship? Their relationship was good. It like, was I good. never remember, you know, no bad times or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, all I seen was my daddy raising his family and my mama doing what she's supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? And see, I think this generation need to look at things because I think we was taught wrong when they say that man is the head of the house. And as I got older... I looked at that, and I remember Dr. Miles Monroe. I used to follow Dr. Miles Monroe before. Mm -hmm. And see, they taught us a lot of stuff that is not really how it went. And when I heard him teach that, it bought me somewhere because the man is the foundation. Mm -hmm. The lady is the head of the house. Because my mama paid all the bills. My daddy put the money there, and my mom made sure everything was taken care of. But the foundation laid on my daddy whatever his rules was that's the road she rolled with mm -hmm. you see what i'm saying like, nowadays you got you know a lot of competition so people be feel like well, i can't date a bus driver i can't date it. but then is you happy in that relationship yeah you see what i'm saying like i never gambled in my life and the reason why because that was not allowed in my daddy's house you see what i'm saying and i'll never forget I remember one day he came home. We had animal cards. I know you remember animal cards. Yeah, animal of course. Mm -hmm. And he came home, and he seen us playing. He said, I don't want no cards in my house. And I guarantee you never seen no more cards in his house. Wow. See, you know the reason why I like to ask all these questions is because a lot of times, just like you said that he was the foundation, their relationship was the foundation for you. Exactly. You understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. And the things that you saw and the things that you went through as a child is what helped you to be the person that you are today. And exactly. that's the reason why I like to ask those questions because we're going to eventually talk about you becoming that man, but we need to know where you came from. Yeah. For, for sure, and, for sure. And, and, and it's crazy because I came from that. And that's why, I, like the old folks say, um, you know, you are what you eat. 
mm-hmm. you got to watch what you feed your appetite. Mm-hmm. Because I came from that, but as my dad had died, getting into the music and stuff, I was feeding myself the wrong, the wrong. thing. And I didn't stick with what I saw. Because yeah. that, that leader role that you had um, guiding you was now gone. It was, it was, it was gone, and it was, I was, we was flooded with, you know. The streets. Yeah, well, the streets is one thing, but the way the world is designed, you know, like what I'm trying to say, a lot of songs I made, I should never made them. Nothing you know what happened by mistake, though. No, no, nothing. Right. Nothing is to help my mistake. Yeah, you know because what I'm you had to go through what you had to go through to help somebody. But that's young what built me and mold me to who I'm right. on now. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just saying. Do you have just, kids? I had three boys, but mm-hmm. my two—I lost my two oldest sons. Two I lost oldest. My, I lost son. my oldest son. Rest in peace. At 20 and 05, right, um, right before Katrina. Then mm-hmm. I just lost my second son. He was like 35. Wow. For, overdose with that pill stuff. Fitting up. Mm. With that fitting up. Right after the P lost his dog, like in September. Wow. wow. I, yeah. and, and I want to talk about that too because I, I, it's certain subjects when I hit them, I, I definitely want to, I, I want to talk. talk. Right yeah, it. because, you know, we talked to Kenny B and we talked to a lot of different people about, he, he got off of them. He happened to be one that was able to kick the habit and he's a real known popular. But he was uh, on perks. He was not on fentanyl. Yeah, but he, but they, they lace it. Well, they, they put like, yeah, yeah, like they, he wasn't he on don't, fentanyl. Yeah, it correct. was just lace. It was, they, they lace all up the pill. Oh, okay. Correct. Like, if you're doing like listen to me anything I used to be a big weed smoker you can't give me no weed you can't give me See nothing what I'm saying? right now you know what I'm saying I'm scared to what they eat because, at the wrong because places they, lace they, they can put anything in it's by anything. design it's like they know what they're doing it's like it's not a game bro it's like it's by design so when you think about you know uh, and I want to talk about that for a, a little bit just like I said for you to lose your son and in the environment that we're in Gangsta Boo uh, uh, that other boy uh, what was his name Big Big, big uh, scar, you know, mm-hmm. all of these different people that we're hearing. Even I, I even heard of, and it may be far fetched, DMX, all type of different people that we don't know. Like what we hear the stories of one dying, but we don't know. But we know that that fentanyl is one of the main reasons. Mm-hmm. A lot of time people are able to hide whatever happened. But just man, uh, did you see a problem with your son even dealing with that? Or it was just something that happened on a whim? That he was hiding it? No, he wasn't hiding it like. My two sons, my two oldest sons, because my second son, he came like 15 years, my third son, I mean. 15 like, years like, after. Yeah. I raised them like, all right, my girlfriend at the time, it wasn't her kids, she raised my kids with me. And I remember the first time she went shopping for them, and she bought them different outfits. And I was like, look, if you buy some red and black Jordan, if they ain't got them in two, don't buy them. So I raised them so close, so close. When he lost his older brother. It and, affected him. Yeah, he fought it for 16 years, but I saw it. You know what I'm saying? That it was, it was real rough on him. He didn't really have a, a drug problem, but he never really accepted that disconnect of his brother. And I know because at the funeral, like all he kept saying like that, it was Lil Joe and it was Ronnie. Like he'll break down, he'll cry real hard. So he never was able to accept that. You know what I'm saying? Then I wind up, you know, going to jail. He went to jail, in and out of jail. So it just was so, so much. So you weren't you know able saying? to be there for him, like, like I went, you could have. Yeah, but as a parent, but even if you were able to be there for him, what can a parent do to help that child get over especially, that? Especially when you got this being promoted so heavy. You see what I'm saying? It's hard because it's like everybody doing it. Everybody saying do it. You know what I'm saying? It's like when I was in the streets, you know what I'm saying? I sold drugs to get the money. Like, we didn't really get high. You know what I'm saying? I smoke weed. You couldn't give me high. I tell you, know you that saying? all the time. Yeah. Like, like, y'all got the money. The money and the girls. But y'all hiding them. Yeah, and the girls. And the girls. Oh, yes. So, <laughs> on the real. That's real. On the real. I had, I had, yeah. But, it was, you know, it's like now... I don't, I just don't get it. You know what I'm saying? I tried to put him in the best position I can, you know what I'm saying? But it just was. So just was there any, any signs of, of him struggling with a drug addiction of any sort? He wasn't really struggling with addiction. He was struggling with pain. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like his brother, then he lost his best friend. Like, you know, man, 
we we went through that, man. You know so, what I'm saying? Lose you lose so many, it takes a toll on you. Did okay? Did it it happen before Master P lost his daughter, or around the same time? The same time? Around the, the same, same week? I, I, no, not the same week. I would say probably within thirty to forty days of that of, of that time. Yeah, because he 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 I lost him like I think it's September 29th, and I know Master P daughter was somewhere in there because it was like I'm like damn. Like, so you, you knew about her daughter before yeah, your son. Yeah, and when they said it was appealed, I was like, wow, we still losing, bro. Wow. You know what I'm saying? It's like whether, you know what I'm saying? Because sometimes you might, like, okay, I'm doing music. They did music. Cash Money, Master P, did music. we all was right there. They made it. But we still fighting the Sam Elephant. You know what I'm saying? We still losing our people. Man, and, and that's you know crazy, saying? man. I sure hate so to it, hear money that. money is not the key. It's not the key. <laughs> it's not the key. It, what you think the key is? Knowledge is understanding and accepting the wisdom from it and living it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I did, like he doing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's, yeah. the, that's the key. But it takes time because you, when you overcome it and you're living a life and yes, these kids can watch you and look at you, but they're looking at you like, well, when you was younger, you had it. I want to have what you had it when, when you know you was younger. They're like, I'm young. I want to do this. But they don't realize that I might not even live to reach where you reach. Exactly. You exactly. know what I mean? They're not thinking about that. Now, tomorrow is not promising. Money is too, money and girls and all of that is too glamorizing, I, th I should yeah. think. Yeah, I, it I, is. I, you, it have is. To, you have to feel your spiritual void for me. I, I, I mean, I, I, I'm a believer in, in Christ. I'm a, Christ, a Christian guy. So everybody has a faith that they believe in, okay? It, it may be whether it be Muslim, money, it, whether it be whatever money. Something is, is going to drive you. And if you can have balance with life, man, it can change your circumstances. It's all mm -hmm. about balance, really, more than anything. So if you can balance on spiritualism and then balance on, you know, whether you're eating, you know, feeling your, your, your flesh, all of these different things, your mental, everything has to have balance in order for you to grow emotionally balanced. All of these are different pla places where we need to have structured balance so that we'll be able to deal with different things. Even your son, if it's drinking, if you don't have a balance with that, that can take you out. If it's smoking. Food. Food. I just said food. That, that is the thing. I'm food telling you. Is food everybody's is, struggling with everybody that one. Has, everybody. Everybody. That's everybody. the biggest <laughs> drug on the planet. planet. And, and so when you look at sugar, all of these different things that we battle, it all boils down for me to balance. Mm -hmm. If you can balance, you can you can learn to maneuver in life. You exactly. feel me? Yeah. If, if you can balance everything, not do overdo it, not underdo it, but balance. The thing I think is the key, you got to figure out how to slow life down because life is on its own speed. You know what I'm saying? And I think a lot of these kids get caught up trying to keep up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? With that. You know, like, even with my kids, it's like, you know, it's like the other kids, a lot of kids that had that falls at the house. You know what I'm saying? So you got to respect, I got something different that other people, because like a lot of, they, they kids, a lot of kids in the neighborhood grew up my kids. They went on and, and, and did what they're supposed to do. And they thank me all the time. You know what I'm saying? They call me, check in on me, they, you know, they, they, they're doing good. But sometimes I think, you know, you get caught up, then you know, it's no book to being a parent that they give us. Man. They ain't give us, you know what I'm saying, no instruction. Book. You just go out there and you figure it out. Wow. A lot of times we live what we saw as kids growing up. That's why, but at the same time, that's why I go back to your parents. The way how you saw them, you sound like you had a great life as a kid growing up and saw in that structure. But at the same time, you turn heads once your daddy passed away and you didn't follow in the footsteps of your parents, so to say, growing up, because you had a good you know, role model as in how it's supposed to be. That was your manual. That's right. So wow. what happened? I, well, like I was trying to say, it's like learning your ears, your eyes, and your mind to the wrong things. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, at that time, that's when they switched the music. When I came up, you know, the music, you know, it was about love. You know what I'm saying? You had LTD. L Green, you know what I'm saying? Michael Jackson. Man. So when you know what I'm came, saying? You it had was something L totally different. Well, not when it first came, when it was hip hop, the Sugar Hill Gang, but when they started getting to the, the Luke Skywalker, Two Live Crew, um, NWA, 
you know what I'm saying, ghetto boys and stuff like that, you start hearing, you know what I'm saying, you know. So when I came out, you know what I'm saying, I'm living this stuff that I'm hearing. And so you're seeing. saying that the music is more powerful even Not than- Not just the music, because I was in the music, it was like, okay, you got the music, you got the drugs, the cocaine came too, the crack came crack at the came. same time. You know what I'm saying? Plus you got the property, you know what I'm saying? You got the alcohol, you know what I'm saying? So it's all it's all about how the system was designed to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like for me, I like to say I got pimped by a system was put in place. That would happen to me. Because <laughs> like I said, in my that village, I had a mother and a father in every house back then. See what I'm saying? So I had all the examples. And everybody had big families. Everybody had a mother and father. But all the older men died around that time. So like the guys that was, I came in 67, like the guys at 57 was supposed to be teaching us, they started doing the drugs. Then wow. we start selling them good, the drugs. man. You said you come in 67? Yeah, I came in 67. You look good, man. Yeah, thank you, man. You do too. Hey, man, let me, let me get at, mm -hmm. I'm going to get at you one time, man. Uh, when it comes down to the music, man, I see you with the Mo, Mobo Camp record. I mean, I, I came down there and I interviewed Sharani at Peaches. She love me. That's my... Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I mm -hmm. interviewed Sharani and uh, I interviewed uh, a Mac and KL. You know, I, I do all of New Orleans, you know. People don't mm -hmm. even realize how, because I'm where I'm from, I'm so close to New Orleans, I mean, so close to Louisiana mm -hmm. that I always had a love for Louisiana and Texas. So I'm, I'm five miles away. So at the end of the day, when I go down through Gray and go down to Vivian, Louisiana and cut and go back up LA-1 to Shreveport mm -hmm. and, and I might come to Natchez Natchitoches or, or I might come to you never know I might go to Alexandria or, or Monroe or yeah. I might go to New Orleans but I'm just saying I love the fact that we so we so close together man that it's hard to separate we love each other people don't realize it Louisiana when you, when you think about PMC and, 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 and them linking with uh, Master P and them back in the mm -hmm. day we're gonna get into all that but I wanted to ask you like like what did Peaches Records uh, how was how was it uh, when y'all first, you know, you've been knowing her a long time, but how was that just linking with her and be it going by the store and just how y'all came up? Oh um, man, it, it was it was love um, with Sharani, you know, going to Peaches Records because um, she um, like she puts a lot of a lot of local music out. She puts a lot of a lot of um, music out, local music. She had pushed a lot of mu music out, you know, local music and stuff. And believe it or not, when I came up in prison, I was working now with Mr. Sharon. What? Yeah. Uh -huh. You worked Mr. over there? A lot of people uh -huh. went to that shop. I met, uh, rest in peace, I met Soldier Slim now. I met Crazy. Well, I had met Crazy years ago, but I met them then when I was working there. Like wow. In two, like 2000, 2001, I worked for Mr. Sharon. So for, everybody came to that shop. I used to be there too, huh? How long was you there? Uh, I might have stood up Mr. Ronnie maybe a year or so. Okay, so there. you was there when Mia came, was working there? Yeah, I know Mia from there too. Uh -huh. So y'all was working together? Yeah, uh huh. I mean, I mean I was she, Mia. did she work or was she lazy? Right, let's Ooh, talk about Mia. 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 Yeah, Mia, was Mia, she Mia get down, man. Mia, 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 <laughs> Mia, 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 This is when you were young, so I'm an average man. Be hiding in the back. I hear that a lot, even with the music, though. Mia runs circles around the average man. Mia is a good person. She's working hard. She's real smart. I seen him. At the at Rock the Bells concert last year, because she had a party for one of our kids there. And man, she's, I think she's doing a kid for like 30 something years old or something. I said, wow, wow. time fly. Uh -huh. Yes, I think she had a restaurant or something out mm -hmm. here they was telling me she, about. Yeah, she, she, she be do doing the food them seasonings and, all that. and stuff. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Be, um, the food out there too. So, what, mm -hmm. what shift did she work? Did she come in before you or after you? Um, she came in the evening time. In the evening she time, you already time. be done. Came I was in the evening time. No, no, because oh. I was working two jobs. I was working in the daytime. Then I used to go hang out by Sharani in the evening time, which we always did. That we was doing the music mm -hmm. and all that too. So she was like, "Mobo, why you don't just get a job, y'all?" <laughs> okay, give, give, me, like, give me a uh, time when some music came out that y'all was both excited about that hit pe hit Peaches Store because it it was a time when something came. Y'all like, man, that that thing it finally came to the store. Um, what you talking about That's when I was working? Time. Yeah, when you was working there. Um, when you love music, man, you it, it's certain things, certain times that come. The music is is so dear to at us. That, at that time, come on with I it, was man. Real, I was on Soldier real hard. Oh, so Soldier came out with something. Yeah, I was on Soldier Slim real hard. Uh huh. He came out. I think that's when he left No Limit. Okay, you know what I'm saying I was on that one. I was on that one real hard. Wow. He says you knew him when you was there because you met to, him. You met him when you were there. So tell the me a story about him. Man, I tell a Sam story because 
like when I when I was there one day, Soldier and Crazy came came in, and um, I be joking, you know what I'm saying. So when they walk in, I was like, I was like, um, y'all are big dogs. I ain't nobody. So Slim, he came over there. He was like, who? Mobo Joe, he's like, man, we come up all lower level, rootless juvenile, doghouse positive, yada yada. You know, just running it, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, all right, all right. He's like, yeah. Yeah, so he was um, you know, telling me that did he say he was up there in Angola with um Foshaw from Rootless Juvenile. So he juvenile. had been who you talking about, soldier? Yeah, soldier. He had been locked up. Yeah, he had been locked up in a couple prison. Of time. Yeah, he was in Angola with Rootless Juvenile with Foshaw from Rootless Juvenile mm -hmm. too. But he was telling me then he was like, Well, I didn't make it to the walk. With folk to holler at him, but he said he heard he was getting out. So when he get out, he wanted to drop something. You know wow. what I'm saying? So, so mm -hmm. was was the music is because uh, you you hear these stories about Soldier Slim. Was the music? I mean, you you say you was waiting on the album. It was in anticipation for his next project. Yeah, yeah he he had to sit on on his back at that time. What's yeah. his best album to you? Um, I can't think of the name. Our best I'm song. Trying to think of, I'm trying to think of the songs. I'm not my dog. That was my That's favorite. That's your favorite? One. Yeah, because the thing about it, my youngest son, I had him on a real tough one. That was, <laughs> we know we used to be rapping into each other and going back and forth, and that was his own. That was our favorite one. And right were now. you still in New Orleans when he passed? A matter of fact, yes. I was, a matter of fact, it was so sad because when he passed, I was still working at Peaches. Wow. Really? Really. Yeah, I was still at Peach because I so remember during that I was whole year, leaving, uh, right before you met you met him within that year. And that short and that period, same time he passed. And, 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 yep. and you gotta value your time because he was when I was just see him at the at the club, the Sam Club that C had the issue. I was in there that night too. So mm. all of us was, was in there. You was there when C had the issue. Yeah, when it, mm -hmm. when it, when okay, it happened. Okay. I was in the in the Sam Club because it was on the West Bank where I'm from. It was right there in Harvard where I'm from. So um but every weekend on Saturday we used to be there. And he used to always tell me like, man, book the studio, you know, we're gonna go do the music. But at this time, I'm still trying to get my balance. I'm just coming home, I got three boys at the house, plus I got their friends still think I got it like that. You know right. what I'm saying? So I never would have thought he was gonna get killed because having him and four on a song together would have been so fire, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I remember hearing, um, I was leaving, Peaches, right. and they came on the radio, and they said it. As soon as they said it, my youngest son rung my phone, and I called the phone, and he was like, "Dad, they killed Soldier Slim." I was like, "I know." And he's like, "Dad, why? Why they kill him?" I'm like, "Son, I'm, I'm on my way home. I told you I get home." So when I get home, I goes in the house. He see me. He, he like just standing there, waiting like, for you to say something. And I ain't got no answers. So I'm like, so let me take a shower. I ain't talked to him about it since. You know what I'm saying? Then wow. he lost his oldest brother right after that. You know what I'm saying? But it's just like, it's just so much trauma that we've been going through all our life. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I was still there when that, when that happened. Wow, and so you and, and, and what, what um, how was the city during that time? Like, was he as impactful? Because today, when you go to New Orleans and you mention any rapper, nobody has the essence, nobody has the feel of talking about Soldier Slim uh, uh, that he has. Like, you can talk about a, a P and all of them, but, and you can talk about a Baby, Birdman, and all of them, but when you talk about Soldier Slim, there's a difference, I'm telling you. It is. And it I want to know, just from your perspective, why is that? Because even though he was living like he was living, he had a different spirit. You know what I'm saying? And I got to tell people right now, if Slim wouldn't have got killed, the whole music scene in New Orleans would be a, a different. Because he was able to work with everybody, and he wanted to work with everybody. You know what I'm saying? Just like I say, when he seen me, and he came to me like that, a lot of people not gonna do that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because even like, maybe like three weeks before he got killed, could have been a month, when I see him at the club. Because you know, Everybody want to try to charge. You know what I'm saying? See, I don't do stuff like that. If I can work with you, I'm going to work with you. But everybody else, everything, they can have money, but they still going to hustle, still to help you up. They're going to try mm -hmm. to hustle. Mm -hmm. So I seen Slim. I said, Slim, I said, what you going to hit me for a verse? And he told me, he said, Mobile Joe, you real, I'm real, book the studio, Slim going to be there. That's what he told me. Wow. He said, man, we ain't going to do one. We're going to drop some stuff for the city. You know what I'm saying? Because he know what I did 
in the early 90s. You know what I'm saying? I turned the city up on a real gangster music. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's why you say, y'all, we come up off your music. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Like a lot of people, when they let Soldier, they they like they hear a full shop, they be like, I hear a lot of Soldier. But you know, that's who he, they come up listening to. You wow. know what I'm saying? But he was like, yeah, so what he was living at, well, I ain't gonna say he was living there with his mama, cause I thought he was, he, that girl lived down there. It was right down from Peaches. Mm. So what I used to do, every evening, I'll be at Peaches, and you know, what Sharani's store was at, it was right there with all of them. Females, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So when I ain't doing nothing, I'm spending my time at the door. I'm just I know, home. I feel you, baby. I'm, I'm at the door, I'm looking. I feel so you. he'll pull up in a Cadillac with the, with, the, with the female, so he know I'm in there, so he's looking. And when he see me down, he whining, wow. You wow. Go, wow, let's, let's wanna go to the studio right now. Wow, what's up, my boy Joe? I'm like, I'm like, man, you know, cause I ain't right right now. You don't send a really <laughs> maneuver, but yeah, like Slim. That's man. love. But that's yeah. so crazy that a lot of people rest always talk so Slim. good rest about him. Slim. Man, he was, yeah. he was a then, solid one. But then we've met people who from New Orleans who um say that back then when Slim was actually alive, people didn't give him as much love back then compared to now being passed away mm -hmm. so you know when we tell them that no when we go down there everybody love him this 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 and they're like man i was born and raised down there when he was living they wasn't giving him as much love as how they're giving him now yeah is that true it's, yep yep it's like that That's but, but they, they, they didn't they didn't realize his value and you know, like you, and don't then, you don't miss. Yeah, you don't miss nothing. You, you, it's gone. It's gone. Yeah, and you know when you saying? look back yeah. and think like you just thought about those recollections of what happened, you be like, "Man, that dude was the truth." Yeah, it come like that. Yeah, yeah. and I feel bad because I feel like I, I let him down. Wow, you know what I'm saying? Because that's something he wanted to do. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because he come up, listen to Ruler's Juvenile Doghouse. He told me this. Wow. Like he named just an order like that, and he was like, and I was like, "Damn, I should have. I could have made it happen, but I didn't push the, the ruler." You wow. know what I'm saying? But I wish I would have because you never know. Let me ask you about uh, C. Murder that night because you, you say you were you there that, that night. That. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What was that temperature like? Because everybody says he's innocent. He innocent. You know what I'm saying? Like I was sitting at the ball just like I'm sitting right here. Like where we live at, like I live in Jefferson Parish. Like our shelf, Harry Lee, like he was like the ultimate devil. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm talking about, a matter of fact, like, one of my, my neighbors, one of my best friends, they killed him. Wow. Like, shot him in the back of the head. You know what I'm saying? He came on the news, and they asked him why he didn't find a warning shot, because my friend, he had a gun, but he wasn't parting it. He was kind of like out of his mind a little bit. And they shot him in the head. You know what he said? What? We trained to kill. Wow. Uh, so, <laughs> so what, what happened that night, to your recollection of, of that <laughs> night? Like, all I heard, a fight or something broke out, and then, it was, I ain't never heard no, hear nobody fighting, I just heard it, pop. I thought it was firework, you know what I'm saying? So then people was like, man, somebody just got shot. So when I look, and I'm like, man, so you already know, you gotta get up out of there. You How know big what is the club? Uh, it was a nice, Decent club, I mean, like y'all like clubs people, up here. But how many people? Probably that club. Probably I used to own that club one time too. Shh. What was the name of the club at that, at that time? time? It, um, I had it was Rollers. I can't remember that name. name of, but now, because that was twenty years ago. Yeah, that was twenty years ago. Yeah, that was twenty years ago. I can't remember. That. I had it was Club Rollers, but I can't remember what the name of it. But it's probably was like about a thousand. Okay. A thousand people. Mm -hmm. You had to go upstairs and stuff like that. Oh, upstairs, downstairs. Okay. Yeah. But did you? I mean, because at this time, Master P. Nim was moving and grooving. A lot of people knew they was popular. For was it odd for for C. Murder to be there at that? I'm telling you, all of us, Slim, me, everybody, Chopper used to be there. All of us used to be up in the club. That was the place to be. That was the that the club that was popping. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, just and that was in West Bank. On the West Bank, it was in Harvard, Louisiana, where I'm from. And, and so you hear, the, the West you hear the pop that night. So when I hear the pop, I'm really still sending the ball, because I'm drinking at this time. So then people are like, man, they just shot somebody. So when I get up, and from where I'm at, I can see the dance floor. So when I see the little guy, all mad, I know this is JP, I'm out of here. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So I, I blazed out, you know what I'm saying? Then a couple of days later, 
or whatever, then they say they arrest the murder, but the other people are like, man, that dude ain't do that, that dude ain't do that. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So wow. was he the biggest name there that night? Yeah. Well, I guess, because Slim was, Slim was there that night too. You okay. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. No, because you know they always say they like, not saying that this is what happened in that case, but they always try to go after the biggest name that's around. Well, JP, time. they like the feds. Mm. Somebody going to jail. K gone. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they go, somebody going, somebody going to jail. Mm-hmm. So a, after you, when you, when you sit back and think about it, man, you know, you know, God was on your side because you could have been mixed up in any of that stuff at exactly. any time. Exactly. Being in those places where these things happen, you know, um, I just say, man, I know it was tough because anytime you look around, we at the club, we doing, that's what we did when we that's was young, we did. man. Exactly. So to see somebody get shot or killed, it was a norm too sometime because of the club reputation for that happening. For, for me, I can remember certain clubs you go to, if somebody got killed, we'll be there the next week. I'm not playing, bro. I mean, you can go down a list of people that we know innocent is in jail. Yeah. The same stuff like C, but you know, everybody just don't see, but we know all the people that they got caught up. It, 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 it's been happening. Wow. You know what I'm saying? I, I, like I said, I, I definitely don't want to miss out on nothing. I uh, have well, a question. Um, you say you live, honestly, are you still talking no, about we can, C? No, we can go ahead. Okay. You say you live in West Bank, Harvey, mm-hmm. right? And that's outside of New Orleans, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I know a lot of people feel like do some people feel like that is New Orleans? Because I know like New Orleans have like the separation, uptown, downtown, and all of that. So what's the difference between where you are compared to uptown, downtown, and all of the that? The Mississippi River divide us. That's it. The Mississippi River, uh-huh. And where I live at is Jefferson Parish. Uptown and all that is Orleans Parish, which we got an Orleans Parish where New Orleans started at in LJ's, which is on the West Bank. Mm-hmm. That's what that's where New Orleans started at. But it's the river that divided to make it East Bank and West Bank. Mm. That's the difference. But the culture, everything, everything the is same. the same. That's just like, I mean, if you're from Arlington and you in New York, you ain't gonna say Arlington, you're gonna say it's Dallas. Dallas. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's normal because it's all the same culture. You dress the same. You talk the same. You're doing the same thing. Because it's just, and then, you know, New Orleans ain't like Dallas. Shit, we can go anywhere in, what, 12 minutes. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I can, I can actually go uptown, downtown, West Bank, East, all less than 15 minutes. Boom, boom. That's what I've always Let me ask heard. you this about Cheeky Black, your artist. Mm. Cheeky Black. Yeah, let's talk about Mr. Twerk. Twerk. Yeah, the Twerk. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, you guys. You need to get cre- on the show. Okay. On the real. Okay, creating that, creating that, uh, that whole movement early, like as you did. Do you feel like you guys get the credibility? No. Why is no. that? Because we're from New Orleans, and they got clicks down there. And they ain't gonna tell it like it is. They ain't gonna just tell the truth. What you know year what did she start that movement? That song, that Twerk something. They be getting on my butt. I almost say 94, 95. And people wasn't talking about twerking before that. Well, down there we was. Yeah, down there. But she didn't have the internet and all that, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, that's why the song was made. You know but what outside saying? of but outside of there, nobody really was talking about twerking. Well, New Orleans and the surrounding areas, Louisiana and stuff like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Then when we it started in New Orleans and then we put the record out. You know, it started spreading all over. Mm. See what I'm saying? Like, how we used to, like back then, they have, like, you have certain words that you can say that get the clubs hot. You know what I'm saying? Like what? Like, twerk something, nigga. Yeah, yeah. I you know want a real fine woman have, that can twerk with her, had, all of them songs. Like, oh, I had, okay. I had all this, of other, them. this other guy. Chopper style. Um, Lil Goldie. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, you like, it's hype stuff that you just bump. Mm-hmm. In, the, in, the, in, the, in the club so mm-hmm. that's why on the original record that we did we did it live just like you do it in the club mm. you know what I'm saying but she was the first one to put it on wax with Mobile Joe Records she was the first one to do it wow and and, and I, I think that's live man like mm-hmm. like you just like like for you guys to be so embedded and for, for you guys to be so creative and was, I, I want to say thank you yeah, you welcome. Gotta say that. <laughs> Gotta say that. It's like it's 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 crazy because now I'm mad, and I'm like, damn, 
all these years later, and that's all they want to do is twerk. <laughs> that's what I say. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't gonna lie. I be looking, but I ain't gonna lie. If it, if it, it just it's just too much. It, just it didn't start off much. like that. It didn't got crazy. It's done got exactly. <laughs> I'm like, bro, like it's like it's everywhere, everybody. So if anybody said the twerking started that twerk word and that the way y'all displayed it started anywhere else, what would you say to that? Well, it started. You know, with Chica Black in New Orleans, we was the first one put it on wax. You know what I'm saying? And how I came across Chica, I was at a concert and she was doing our thing. Because back then, you do is roll the, the, the Trigger Man records and you give him the mic and she go. So when I seen that, you know what I'm saying? I was like, man, I want to put her out and stuff like that. And we put it on wax. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Because I had, at this time, I had done set the foundation for all the gangster rap already. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So they had a lot of. At first, I was against bounce. I wasn't trying to do bounce. Mm -hmm. But then after I did what I did, and I seen, like, they were like, Chica from the Night Wall. You know what I'm saying? Ricky B, Shaking from her, they was from the East Bank. So people wasn't giving them opportunities, so I seen opportunity to put somebody in a position to win, and that's what I did. Wow. So um, tell me about, because you, you know Baby. Yeah, I know, I know, baby. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> How old were you when you met him for the first time? I met Baby and Slim at the studio. Um, I had to be like about, I met Baby and Slim in the 91. Okay. I probably was like 23, 22. I had to do some math on that. But you. But we all was young. But you heard about him before that, before you actually met Never him. heard of him in my oh, life. That was early. Never. Oh, okay. Never. Is so what? And they probably never heard of me neither. Exactly. Never. So what was he like when you first met him? What was his work, work ethic? Because you were in studio. So did you see him go in the booth and all of that stuff? No, I was rapping before Barry, baby. I want to go I, back. I, that's why. Let, see, me, I, let, me, let I, me grab I, it. I, let me check that back. I was a gang spitter before baby. <laughs> okay. When I, when, when I, I was the first CEO out of New Orleans yeah. on that microphone. Okay, so when you look at, we got to go to Master P first. Okay. Okay, and you see the movement of, uh, of Calio and all that. Uh, that's after your movement. See, yeah. When, when see I what started, I'm see, when I, when I started, they had other groups out, but they didn't have no labels like me and Cash Money. Me and Cash Money was the first label. Pete ain't come to at them. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? When you're talking 92, 93, 94, it was Mobile Joe and Cash Money. So you know it was Cash Money. Now you had other labels came right after that. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? How long after? I mean, it was like, it was like it was close. Heel toe, heel toe. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But then I I was the way I was, you know, my graphics and the music I was doing, like we was rapping like NWA ghetto balls and stuff. Like a lot of them guys was like bouncing over the beats. We was rapping because I remember was moving around. But go ahead, boss. I was just asking you about the the even the Birdman, like uh, or, or baby and cash money. Some say they brought the gangster rap. Well, receipts don't lie. If you go <laughs> and you pull up um, like my very first song, my very first song that I recorded, and um, Ice Mike, shout out to Ice Mike on the 1200s. He did my first track. He did my first EP. I think Det had one track on there, Who's Pimping Who. But my very first song was called Portrait of a Villain. And that song, we was talking about killing each other. We killed the police in wow. the video. We got a video up to. We killed the police in the video. And the we, video's still on YouTube right now. It's on YouTube right now. Okay. Wow. We, we, we beat the girl up, kick out the car. Wow. Right? Show me another label did that before Mobile Joe. Wow. Then, right after that, I dropped Rootless Juvenile. The name of the album was Hard As The... You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? We had songs like Die Nigga, Hellbound, Arm and Dangerous. Do you think Rufus Juvenile helped Juvenile to get his name? Nah, because Juvie was already doing his thing with um with Jim and them. He was already kind of okay. doing his thing, but he was doing a bounce thing. Like all of them was doing yeah. the, the bounce thing at that time. You see yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, when you hear, and, and this is something I heard, I heard Terrence Gangster Williams say that GD wasn't a spoke person. Spokesman. Who that? GDP. You ever heard of GD? Yeah, I heard of GDP. Is he, uh, nah, he is, is he young or is he too young? He, or? he young, but see, that's the thing about if you want to be the, the mouthpiece to New Orleans, you got to be, you you 
you got to be fair. You can't pick and choose. You know what I'm why saying? Why do you do you think that he picks and choose, or why would you say that? Well, because you know, you just write some of the things that post. Okay, you know what I'm saying. See, when you're in the media or the news, you you, you post. You do what you do. You do news. Okay. You don't pick. Yeah, what you call them? You're you know unbiased. What I'm unbiased. Yeah. So like, say so like people like like when I had the lawsuit, right? TMZ blew it out the water. Yeah, everybody did it. People come back. You know, man, P ain't post your thing. Man, GD. GDP, you know, he I call it, I drop GDPs. Yeah. Yeah, I talk to him. You know, so I'm he, he, now, he didn't post it? I, you know, I, I don't watch him all the time. Like Did you ever ask like, him why he don't, why didn't he? Why wouldn't, why because wouldn't that, hit, he? that hit international news, actually. Did you ask? He from New Orleans. Why ask when you know? So why didn't he? Is it, I don't know. You are just you, said you know. Oh yeah, from know. different sides of town, or does that variate, or nah, any of that? Nah, that ain't got nothing to do with. It. It's like I guess they pick and choose their battles. I don't, I don't really. I never the asked him, so I can't right? say. I right. can't say why. Then he might have posted, and who told me? I didn't see it. Right. You know what I'm saying? But you know, I don't really be looking. But it's a lot of stuff that they don't really. You know what I'm saying? If you're gonna do this, you gotta. No, you can't be biased. Mm. I can you tell know? you, and, and just because I rock with him a lot and talk to him sometimes. Yeah, I got his, I, I got his phone. But, but the to thing him. is, when I asked him about you, it was respect, and you, yeah. the, you the culture, yeah. And and he gave you utmost respect. I gotta exactly. say that he, so, when so, I talk to him, and, yeah. and I'm not, I'm not disrespecting him in no kind of way. But when you when you asking a question, is he the mouthpiece of yeah, New is Orleans? The, that's what they, the spokesman is what the they call him. Spokesman of New Orleans. You know what I'm saying? That's, you a, got big, a, lot that's of, a big You got question. a lot of rappers on the West Bank that he never posted, he never put. See what I'm saying? That's the thing. If you're going to be New Orleans, you're talking. Now, if you want to just say you're the spoke of, of the East Bank, cool. But it got a lot of, you know, rappers that's on the West Bank, and they all look at me as an OG. You know what I'm saying? So they be like, you know, I don't mess with this because they don't do this, do that. You know, you got to, if you're going to be, you can't be biased. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You no, gotta, I get it. You got to be unbiased you know what I'm journalist. Yeah. I get it. But he, I mean, I talk highly of him too. You know what I'm saying? I text him and talk to him about certain things. Yeah. But I'm just saying things that people come tell me. And hopefully he'll see it and then he'll. Because he's going to make a he post younger, about right? it. Is he, yeah, he, he younger. Younger. Yeah, yeah, he's younger. So that part of this side, that side, he know it. I believe me, he know it because I always ask him about everything that I could see from here. Or either I call KL, you know, I'm a. I, yeah. I, I call a lot of people. Yeah, I know bro. KL all of them. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I them basically them. I just like to try to hear the story or, or Moby Dick, whoever. I be trying to, hey, man, what I need? Because I want to make sure we cover all the boundaries when it come down to y'all because I love y'all and I love what y'all bring to our culture. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So I just respect and a I, lot. And respect I, and you like, guys like, a lot. Like the way I was raised, I would never talk down on none of my people. That ain't, yeah. what, I, that yeah. ain't what I do. But, yeah. you know, like when you ask me what Gangsta Sam, I'm like, you know, you can't be the... The spokesman. That's why he was saying, um, "What is this? No rap cap podcast." Because okay. like, dude, he put East Bank and West people on his on his shows. He put everybody, everybody. See what I'm saying? You can't be biased. Bias. You see what I'm saying? I get, it. I get so, it. So you know what I'm saying? That's the thing that the people gonna look at. So mm. if you really want that, if you want that title, you gotta do that. See what I'm saying? See that's why. I, 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 I was able to do what I did because I just told you when Cheeky and Rick and them and Lil Gold and them didn't have an avenue, the West Bank country boy, legend, <laughs> boom, boom, Joe, boom, 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 he'll eat. We all eat. Wow. That's all I want. My so, there was, so there wasn't anybody in New Orleans out that side that you wouldn't have worked with? Nah, ain't nobody. I ain't got no problem with nobody. Wow. I ain't no problem with nobody. I want to go back to that. Uh, I do think, I do think um, like we came out of Rulers Juvenile, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We had, um, it had a thing going on with Bust Down and Tim Smooth. Rest in peace to Tim Smooth. Tim Smooth. I, I put an album out on Tim, to a franchise player. Bust Down. Yeah, Bust Down. Shout out to Bust Down. And they had a little issue at the club that was in Harvey with these guys from the Night Wall called Most Wanted Posse. It's a West Bank thing. It was a West Bank thing, a West Bank thing, right? So, right before... I drop that little feud was going on, right? So when that drop, we was finished the Rootless album. The lower level was already out. So we was finished the Rootless. But it was all gangster. Wow. So I was like, 
I made them do run that shit. It was a, a, a bounce record. Yeah. They didn't want to do it, but I made them do it. Because the project finished. So we shut down for like two weeks because they didn't want to do it. Wow. So when they wind up getting that done, we on, was coming back to my house because I had a pre-production studio at my house. At that time, the most wanted record was on the radio. At the end of the record, they was like saying, there was this and bust down on that, but they was like, um, anybody from that side of the water to get it. You know mm -hmm, what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. When I was 16, 17, I made my first two kids in Desire Project. That's the Night Wall, that's okay. New Orleans, that's okay. downtown New Orleans. Downtown. Mm -hmm. That was like one of the worst projects at that time. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? So I had a call when I was 15, 16. So I already was moving around. I was raised by the older men in my neighborhood. I had money. I knew how to make money and stuff. So I was going anywhere I want to go. So they always had this thing. That's the dudes from across the river, you know, yada, yada, yada. But I'm a man wherever I go. I'm not a gangster. I'm not a killer. I'm a man. And I'm going to respect a man, a man always respect me. So they always had this, so we was already, you know, getting into it with dudes over there. So when they made that song, that's when I told the little guy from Rootless Juvenile to just make a diss record. Mm. Uh, this record, you know, he was just dissing them, but he was like, you know, the same thing they say, like, anybody wanted, if it's going to be up, it's up. Mm -hmm. So I think that right there kind of gap mobile from some of the people not the real ones but the fake ones that want to have animosity against the west bank but how i can because we got family on both sides y'all got family though you know what i'm saying so that's the thing let me you ask you i, I want to ask you about the big elephant in the room you know I, when i do my interview it's always the elephant in the room the elephant in the room for me when i when i talk with you I was on the phone. I told my wife this story. I said I was on the phone. I was listening at this guy playing the playing the guitar before I before that email came through, playing the guitar, and he was singing all these melodies. He was singing each song, and he would say they sound like each other because he was being sued for redoing a song. And then, boom, your email came through, and I said, man. I didn't even stop to look the email. Then I said, let me check this email. And, and I said, damn, it's talking about somebody that took somebody's song. And I and I just, in the first day when I um, started News You Can Use, the first thing I ever talked about was Mobo Joe song. I never met this guy, but I was like, man, this sound sound song sound like uh that the same Glorilla tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I was like, man. And then to have you here now, that's how God worked for me. I'm telling you, it be confirming like boom, 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 like this. I don't even know how it happens, but I know it's sent from God for me the way I believe. You know what I'm saying? So when I seen that, I was like, I got to get him on the show. It had nothing to do with you. It was already some channel to me before I even talked to you. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense because it's like. When you live right and you treat people right, the universe bless you right. Yeah, so you know what I'm saying. When I yeah, get, like, it's not like like your wife said, nothing happened by accident. When I okay, so when I get to the, the the when I call you, I say, man, we got to talk. We want I want you to come on the show as mm -hmm. well. You know, when you can get up here, as soon as you can get up here, let's do this. And you was like, okay, we, I'm, I'm gonna come do it. Okay, and I heard this song, and when I heard it, you guys' version. Have the same tempo, boom, boom. You know that same, that same. When did you make that song? That song that from that the Doghouse Pass, the Streets of the West Bank. Streets of the West Bank. That was a Ninety Three release. That was my third release. Streets of the West this, Bank. This one right here. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And who did that beat? That, that did the beat. Oh, okay. Uh, he did. He did all of this. Listen to this. That's it. Okay, but then the 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 confrontational uh, the the thing that's that that we are comparing it to is the uh, the one with uh, Glorilla. I want to start up sound. 
So, somebody takes this. We talk to ICE about loops all the time. People stealing people's loops and the kids from overseas making loops that they But you steal. don't have company. Everybody don't have the resources to be watching this stuff all the time like they do. Correct. So just tell us how how did you even end up hearing that this had happened? Like you you this your song, this your craft. And how long after it's been out did you hear about it? Oh man, hold on. I should have had it ready to go. The song dropped on September twenty fifth at midnight. Mm -hmm. That's when it. That's when it dropped. Mm -hmm. And I got. I think it dropped. It dropped at midnight, and I got the text at twelve fifty something. I think. Also, that same a fame, a fame out of Charleston. Charleston, South Carolina. South Carolina, Charles. Yeah, I'm going to show y'all when I get off. I can't pull it up right now. Okay, mm -hmm. now just, just text it to me so I can come yeah, up. I'm going to put it up on and the he screen. He texted me. He texted he, he me on Facebook message. He said, OG, oh, he signed me in the, 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 I'm going to show you the video clip. I'm going to show it all to you of, of the video with, with, with Carter and Glorella. He, he had that. And at the bottom, the he same said, time when it came out. Yeah, like that's I'm less than an hour. Time. That's less than I'm an hour like, after like it came I out. I got the greatest fans in the world. I'm telling you. They they know because they came up. Listening I, I to was it. doing it so heavy in the early 90s. And I was doing it on a national level. You know what I'm saying? The quality of my music. The way we were, I had them little boys rapping. We was really doing it. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of people know my music. So when he heard it, soon he heard it. He was like, he was on it. So he sent it to me. And I get a lot of people send me stuff on Facebook. I didn't much catch it right then and there. Because he had their video, and I'm going to show you he had Streets of the West Bank. And he got like a little cold face, like that's cold that took your stuff. Wow. I didn't catch it. So I, I, when I woke up, I just hit him 100. I didn't much look at didn't it. Didn't look at it. So, so when did lady, you realize The it? lady who published the songs and stuff with me, about 7 o'clock that night, she called me because she do mm. my social media. So she was like, Joe, she, she you see it. what that guy was telling you? I said, I seen some, but not what he was telling me. Like, they really stole your song. He telling you they stole your song. So that's when I went back. And I, so when I heard it, I was like, yeah. So that you produced this song. Mm -hmm. You made the beat. That made the beat. That, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh -huh. and, and when he made the beat, y'all, you, you basically put out this music and, and, and you, did, you did everything right. Everything right. Then the thing about it, it was like, you know, the song was published. All of the stuff was right there. It could just went and got the sample cleared and That's licensed right. it and bam, bam, bam. You know what I'm saying? Like when the lawsuit came out, you got all these old big brand people, like like to call them, because they think they know everything and they go to speak and it's all, oh, he going after money and all that. Man, let me tell you something. That when I came up, them old men told me, exercise your right. Exactly. Yeah, I don't care if it's the police or whoever exercise your right. You take some from me, I'm coming, I'm coming for it. See what I'm saying? But y'all so big brain, you know what I'm saying? And think y'all know everything. The song came out in September. The lawsuit was filed in April. See, that's what I was wondering. So okay. did you actually contact them in between the lawsuit and Thank when it came out? You're say, smarter hey, than that. I'm just telling you. Right. If it came out in September, I had information in September, common sense, I had, had to, to reach out. Right. And then when I reached out, and so many words, like my lawyer said, they admitted it because they tried to come with a low ball, then they stopped responding. Mm. So what you do next? You just lay down? No. And let them take everything like they've been taking it from us? No. no. You know what I'm saying? Then you got, you know, people, oh, he going as the, as the, at the artists and all that, like the um the new girl in the Brooklyn Club. Yeah, uh, <laughs> pretty, is it, uh, pretty, pretty uh, Jess, pretty yeah, Jess. Yeah, 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 yeah. She, she went at you. Show. Huh? She went at you? Well, she didn't went at me, but somebody, my, but somebody yeah, because she I said, she don't, said go it, it, all, it, it, don't, don't go at the artists and stuff like that. But she the artist. She automatically going to be involved. And there's no news without her, you know, which gone, but it's, it's her and et cetera who all involved. Right. You see so what I'm do saying? you think when they speak, it's power in words and it's power behind these platforms, you know, and they have an influence on people. When you hear people like Jess and people speak on your music because I know Charlemagne, he was like, yeah, it, it, it sounds like it. He, Charlemagne said, 
pay, add the, the man and pay the and man. And pay the man. That's exactly. it. Exactly. Charlemagne, That's he it. gonna always keep it a G. He, 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 I think he our South representative, to be honest with you. That's Envy, why I love, I love that, that Envy the way he do said, it. said it too. He said, Envy I said hit it too. and everything. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Come on, man. Thirty. Now these kids ain't do nothing wrong. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad for them. You know and what I'm saying? Because you gotta think about the artists. That's, they, these young artists don't know your music from back then. Some of them. They, 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 they geniuses. You know what I'm saying? But that's what I think. This is my take. I think an OG like me and you come up off of Mobozo Records. That's his little nephew. His little what to call him? You know what I'm saying? He told him because it's another song. It seemed like he tried to play it and it didn't come out right. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I guess I mean, I'm telling you, take it, it's gonna work. That's you know what I'm saying? That, yeah, and the producer OG. did it. Glow, she don't really know. She she's don't a, know. She the rapper. You she know what I'm saying? She, like, why, I like it. Why is we mad? Because if I wasn't a businessman and I was a big brand dummy, I could have made him stop the money. You could have. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. could have stopped it. Yeah. You could have. You could have made him take it a down. A businessman, a boss ain't DJ gonna do that. Did. That's what I do. DJ you could make him take, take it down. You know what I'm saying? So when y'all talking about I'm coming at home and all that, this this is our biggest record right now. This is bigger F and F. Look at the numbers. It's big. You know what I'm saying? So if I was an evil, no good person, I could have crushed a young girl. Yeah, I could have crushed them. You could have crushed. They don't. She. They don't teach you business like I told my parenting. So they don't tell her what well, this how that work. So she could have made her perform the song or do nothing. See yeah, you could have shut her down. And she'd have been like, you know what I'm saying? She could have. And, and then that could have happened. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Because like, damn, I this this called it on here. This somebody I, you know I look up to. I got this song, and now bam, bam, bam. Because the the bosses did drop the ball. On wow. the kids. Wow. When you think about saying? the bosses, you got people that are 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 in are, are very much in tune the with what's going on. The in the lawsuit. Yeah, but but when you think about it from a perspective of a Glorilla, you have to think about CMG. You have to think about Yo Gotti and them as well because all of these people are clearing this music. Let's be real. Not CMG. Because my lawyer just got them on another guy from now and now. So, well, so, so much else to a, 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 a lawsuit. Really? Oh, really? Yeah. So, so yeah. they had a, they got another lawsuit. No, this one here has been handled. They lost it. It's over. Damn. Yeah, it's over. I, I don't want to speak on it, but it's done been over. But it was on the news though. Yo, it so was it's on public the, information. It was, on, it was on the news. It was with JMK. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know all the details. But I see when on the news when he won it in federal court. But so mm -hmm. does with, with her being signed to CMG though? Doesn't that put you back in that situation to have to go at them about this music because she she signed to him? Yeah, I know. But all limits added in the suit. Everybody mm -hmm. involved is Ed in the suit. Because her name is but prepared. It's just yeah, it's it's is 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 Glorella because she the artist. Because she the artist. And you know everybody is falling Plus, below. That's the that's that's the the click for everybody. That's the news. Right. She the hot she hot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So bam bam. You know Did what I'm saying? Did you ever think you'll be caught up in something like this in this day and age? Man, I need this here right now. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Did you ever I'm think you'll be going me a whole this? 18 wheel of watermelon? <laughs> That's all I'm going by. Nothing but watermelon. But, but in the music industry, this is very common. We've seen this many times before. But the thing, like I was saying, I think somebody put the little guy on it. Cause I got a deep catalog. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I got a real deep catalog. And like I say, I'm looking to come out and let's do more business because if they can't go in there and do that, like, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I can never be mad at these kids when you can go in there and create something like that 30 years old and come back and make this kind of money, get you out the hood. You know what I'm saying? But this is the thing I didn't like when all the people were saying, these guys right here, you know how old they was when we did this? How old they was? How old 15, 16. The producer, the one made the beat, in these two guys. Mm. So you think, because their stuff 30 years old, they don't put the eat off their own stuff? Mm -mm. You know what I'm saying? I was like 20 something years old. Are they still? You know what I'm saying? saying? Which ones you know? are still around? All of them. All, them. all of them. I'm in contact what with all they, of them. What do they? Well, one of them in jail, but you know but what I'm saying? But you're in contact with all, all of them. All of them. All my orders, I have no problem with them. I have wow. no problem with nobody. I have, I have no problem with nobody they're dope with. Yeah. Nobody did music with. Yeah. I did trucking with. Yeah. Because my daddy was a boss and he taught me how to do good business. Wow. You know what I'm saying? I'll walk away from some bull crap. So I'm saying? I do business like boss talk. Hey, that's what I'm talking so I'm about. Because, like, how y'all had that paperwork? Mm. That's how I do business. <laughs> it's business. See so what I'm saying? People don't want to do business like that. They want to. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was telling my cousin about the 
the two groups, I said, about the, the video, mm -hmm. YouTube video. We going back and forth. So you know why we going back and forth? Because you don't have no paperwork. If you had paperwork, you can go to paperwork and say, well, you the boom, boom, boom. This is what was said. This is you what it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. But y'all just want to get the money. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But when you do your business right, boom. Wow. So what you think about her song anyway? I love it. I've been, I've been liking Glow from, 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 from Jump. I've been liking her music and stuff that she was doing. I'm glad for her. Man, and you Memphis, know what I'm saying? Memphis because like the my publisher, she wanted to stop the music. I'm like, nah, man, I crushed that, I crushed that kid. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It, I mean, you know what I'm saying? I, I can't do that. You know what Not I'm in today's society where if you stop it, she gonna have to come back with something else because you can't just put that back and out. And you know how hard it is to get a big record like right. that? Stuff not easy, especially wow. with, with, with all the music coming out. You know what I'm saying? It's not easy. They should take that into consideration then, when know, they're settling. Huh? They should take that into, yeah, into consideration. Yeah, they go in that What did you think about it when you seen it come on The Breakfast Club like that? Oh One man, the, I was I was rolling on 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 on, on the road. So my um, my nephew, his girlfriend called me. She said, "Boy, you trending, you trending even on a Breakfast Club and all." That. I had to go back and listen to her, boy. Which, was, like, the, was the Breakfast Club one of the only ones to cover you? So which one? Which which other ones? Everybody, the everybody. Shade, oh, the Shade, shade one, Room, they had, like, and it was they was going in because people was like I was coming at it, but then one guy broke it all the way down how it go. It had a lot of people like, man, you know this how it go, yada yada yada. You know what I'm saying? You talking about with the guy that's so so puff daddy from not getting that clearance. Probably they got to pay that man every every um, week or every day. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it was like good. In a way, it came out better for me because I wouldn't be on Boss Talk hey, right now. Hey, you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't be doing all this. Boss on the real, baby. On the real, man. I That's wouldn't be real. doing all this. But when they blew out the wall, like I talked to my lawyer because he, he put it, he, he filed a lawsuit on that third. He called me and he was like, um, I'm about to email you the lawsuit and yada, yada, I'm about to file it, whatever. So when he filed it, my partner called. I ain't much new. I had just got to Commerce, Texas. He said, man, we just hit TMZ. I'm like, no. He's like, yeah. Then from now, brrr, phone was gone. Oh, the phone was gone. Crazy. Oh, and the next day, and I'm smiling. Crazy. Yeah. Man, I like it, though, because you deserve it, man. You worked your butt off, I man. I did, man. I paid, man, I paid my dues, man. You paid like your dues. Like I say, dues. like a lot of people don't understand, you know, like when I started the music, um, I just Mike did my first project. I spent like ten grand on equipment, my own money. Nobody yeah. give me nail dollar. You I know what I'm saying? Be, I right my pre-production studio was in my house. I had a four bedroom house. It was me and my two sons and my girlfriend mm -hmm. in that other room. You know what I mean? The nice we was up making these songs and doing all this. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, come on, man. Like, so I'm just gonna lay down. Nah. Mm -mm. No, I, I, I think I come in the sixties, baby. We don't, we don't, we don't lay down. Ain't no laying down. We don't lay down, man. I will, I, go ahead, baby. Um, I had a question because I don't, when we were talking earlier, you mentioned bounce music a lot, and you said you never really just you know got into that or did the bounce music. Who created bounce music? Everlast the Hitman in my book. Why? That's my little brother. He passed away. Rest in peace. Huh? Why him? Because I heard it was somebody else. You ever heard his song? What's the song? Bounce, baby, bounce. Come yeah. on, come on. Mm -hmm. You heard the song? Mm -hmm. You know the words of the song? Mm -hmm. Hmm? I listen to the beat. I'm, t I'm a beat All right, person. who you say they say? They said it was T.T. Tuck and um, right. DJ Irv. Okay, so y'all started Boss Talk, uh -huh. right? So 101 for sure. 101, Boss mm -hmm. Talk 101. So if I come out right now and I start saying, I started Boss Talk 101. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna defend that, mm -hmm. right? Because y'all yes. started that. Yeah. So Tucker was living. All these people who said he said, created bounce, right? He said everybody running around biting Tucker shit. They just don't know that I'm the nigga, the nigga, nigga. What he, he told y'all when he was live. He telling y'all. So if you then he said. When I come around your set, you better boot up. That's a New Orleans thing. Boot up, boot up. mean fight, you know, challenge. I heard that. So if you, if you think you created, boot up. Let's get on the mic right now. Let's get on the mic. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if he telling you, plus I grew up with him. He was like, he was younger than me. You know what I'm saying? And I heard, I heard him kick it before Tucker came out. But Kid in Tucker was in and out of jail. 
Mm. But explain that why y'all ain't said nothing while the man was living. He said it in his song. He was coming all out here, going all over doing a show, and nobody couldn't do him for no show. Pull his song up and read some of the comments. Why would one of the comments? I'm going to show y'all that too. I'm going to look it <laughs> up. I'm going to show y'all. Read the wow. comments. How long did Bounce come after um, Gangster Rap? No, Bounce was first. That's what Bounce I'm telling you. They first. was doing everybody like, well, let me say this. The West Bank rappers. I, before the, the West Bank started getting on rapper, it was Gregory D, Spody T, and Manny Fresh. Okay. That's who really was doing the music, mm -hmm. right? Then, you know, you start having your um, Tim Smooths and Buzz Downs and Marrero and stuff like that. So all the West Bank rappers, we was really rapping. Mm -hmm. We didn't want to do bounce. But Tim Smooth. Buzz down, thick rap about the streets. You know what I'm saying? He just had to basically that one song that really, really did something. But when them little guys came around, they're 15, 16 years old. I'm in the, I don't like to say the streets. I like to say I was in the drug war, world. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So they're seeing how I'm living and doing that. So they're rapping about what they're seeing and what I'm telling them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I was the first one really rapping about what we really was doing. You and you saying? said y'all wouldn't do bounce. It, why Why y'all wouldn't do bounce? Because... Was it too soft for you and you had to be yeah, hard? Is yeah, that what it is? Yeah, yeah. Because that's what. That's exactly what it was. That's what I would think. But I love it, though. Yeah, because... I love it because it's a New Orleans up, thing. That's I the thing. I love it. Because when and I then, think about it, I think about New Orleans. I, like, I just... Ain't want to do it because, like, I come up on hard music. You know what I'm saying? I come up in an era when you had to drop balls. LL Cool J, Jazz Ice, um, Boogie Down Production, Cool Mo D. You know what I'm saying? Then when Lou Skywalker and them came out, Two Live Crew, I liked it, that gritty, you know, nasty, mm -hmm. crazy mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Ice T. That's the stuff I come up on for. So that's what I want to do. But I loved it, the bounce, because, like I say, Hitman. You know, I knew him before he started, he ever came out on whack because he's the rap when he was real young. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And he used to stay at my house and everything. The night he got killed, I give him 500 of his songs. He came to my house and got 500 songs. Left my house less than 30 minutes. Wow. He was dead. 500 songs. Wow. Dang. I mean, you, you talked about, was it Gregory D.? Gregory yeah, did. he mentioned um, him. Shout Mac, out to Greg. Mac was, a, Greg, uh, Mac, Mac was one that rocked with him early on. Mm -hmm. How lyrical would you say Mac was when he come down the rhyme scheme? Oh, Mac get down. I remember Mac get, get, Mac get down. So See, Mac, you had to get down back then. <laughs> yeah. You had to get down back then. You know what I'm saying? Mac come on the grade and all of them like that. So you had to get down. Yeah, Mac get down. And what? if he had not gotten locked up, he would have. Exactly. Really exactly. been there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's another one we interviewed that was falsely, you know, pretty much they just incarcerated, just incarcerated me, blamed him for something that he didn't do, and I just that that, that was a tough one. Louisiana man, they got. I know TDT, um, Texas D TDC, whatever Texas Department. Oh, we ain't playing no game though. They don't play. Like I got a cousin from from Fifth Wall, man. That man been in prison about about six seven times. Mm. And they, they don't play. They ain't trying to let you go. But Louisiana, they just throw you away. Like they're lying on mm -hmm. their railroad. Like I remember when I was young, and um, I had just moved to the Zaya Project. And man, this little guy, man, like 15 years old, they threw this man away, and they got this man on a videotape at a basketball game, and they still wouldn't want let him out. That man did probably about 25, 30 years. And couldn't about, come out and sue them or nothing. They, no, they, they ain't trying what to about and GD brother? He he locked up his too. brother too. Mm -hmm. so like it's a lot going on down there in New Orleans and Texas, man. We got more prisons than yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah. It's just crazy, but at the end of the day, man, God God's still in charge. Yeah, exactly. It don't matter, man. Yeah. Like no matter even when if they down there, they helping somebody down. Yeah, there. like right now, man. We gotta, you know, we gotta like things done changed now. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of different avenues that we didn't have that we got to accept now, man. And people got to, you know, change. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's all right to be a, a young fool, but I pity an old fool. Like, man. like, man, like, I listen to the dudes that talk about the rat and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But everything is still by the same system. Mm -hmm. The ratting system. The 
prison system, the poverty system, the gangster. In my, in my mind, a gangster is only relevant in the black community and on the TV. Mm. You don't hear the racist talking about, oh man, my uncle a gangster. You know what I'm saying? You don't hear the people say that. Because that's what was sold to us. That's what they showed us. That's what they give us. But, Andy, you know what? People talk about the prison systems, but I've heard some people say, you know, prison system saved my life because if... In some cases, in it some, do. In a lot of cases, like but if I, mean, I was... it took, though. Right, because if I was never arrested, sometimes it might take two, three times to get arrested. I'd have for sure been dead. But also, you got to look at if you wouldn't trapped into poverty, prison system wouldn't have been... In, I got to ask down. you about this. I got to ask you about... Um, Cash Money, um, West Bank, um, No Limit. They're, they're, these are all separate sides of town, right? These yeah, I'm on the West Bank, but they they uptown. They like boom, boom. They right down. They right by each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that they never have come together or mm -hmm. ever, ever did anything together? Being you've been in the music game yeah. a long time, so that's one of the things that our people uh -huh. always ask We've on asked this that show. Question a lot and of we time. we can't get a straight answer from none of y'all. So I'm I mean, when you, you when you got a wall going on and you got casualties involved, it's hard to get past that. But a you lot of it has to do with ego. Because if you can see a greater good, that you can bring it together for the greater good, why not? Well, everybody ain't going to see that. Do you, you know think it ever happen? That, will they ever like, do anything I, I, I got, I, I, I can't, like, like Birdman said it the best. He said he don't see no reason for it now. You know what I'm saying? He, I heard him say that. So, I, I mean, I got to leave it right now. Like, what can they do now anyway? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know? I mean, it would be good for us as a race of people for mm -hmm. just them to have a set down. That would be big right there. Right. You know what I'm saying? That, you know, that this stuff can be squashed. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But for us getting together and doing music, I don't really, like he said, I don't really see that. No, it's just a sit down. Part. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. really talking about really just a sit down. Yeah, right. well, sit down, I mean, it, it'd be that nice would be huge. if I, I think I agree with you on that. And I think it can happen because I see both of them grow. They you know what I'm saying? Like, they, I see, I see both of them grow, especially Stunner. Stunner, I see, I see, I, I respect where he at. I look, I like how he looking, how he moving, and everything. I like that. You know what I'm saying? So I think, you know, it could happen if somebody can get it put together. You see what I'm saying? What I but, think people don't do, um, y'all rappers have. A lot of these young kids looking up to y'all in a lot of ways, just like how you, you know, you looked up to rappers when you were growing up and they started this thing where with this you know segregation they're over here they're over here different teams so to say and yes they're growing up but these younger people that's below them coming up in that same sort of way representing the same way although they weren't really so-called involved back then at that time so it's like it makes it seem like it's a never-ending cycle so to me the only way to break that cycle is yeah, I said down. I'm telling you, it, it'd be. I think it'd I agree be, with you. That'd be I huge. I mean, it'd be great just just to have them sit down and pick their brains to hear how they feel and what you mm -hmm. call them. It's, it, it was like Gucci Man and Jeezy. Yeah, you know, that, that was that big, was big, for the big culture. but it was mm -hmm. kind of you know weird. Saying? Yeah, it was kind of it was kind of <laughs> crazy. Yeah, it was kind of crazy. You know what I'm saying? But that's what I'm saying. They should do a sit down because that could have went left. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it, it sit down like 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 Boss Talk 101. Sit down on the real and man, you know, down, just get it, it out for the kids can see. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we, we can do that we, on we, Boss Talk 101. Hey, but we, we, sure we that, that would that would be crazy if, if we set Birdman down and Master P down and Slim down at hey, hey, oh, right here. Man, that'd be crazy, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I never thought of it. I think, we, we always think about the music, but what you said, just an absolute, yeah. just a set down, a conversation, because you got to understand, I got to say this, when KL was here, he told me about a time in his house. I, I, I you seen that, that episode? Uh, I seen or did that. You, when he was mm -hmm. on here? About no, I, their, yeah, I about seen that, and I seen him talk about it he a said, few times. Yeah, he yeah. said they was in the house, both of them, uh, rapping to body body, freestyling to body body when they were younger. Yeah. So they have been in those rooms together. Yeah, and I and heard both of them talk highly of each, of other. each other. Like they respect each other, hustle. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But I think since Boss Talk 101 put it in the universe, how the universe works, it's going to happen. We always you know try. 
I mean, you know, you gotta understand words. Words yeah. are more than words. They make things happen. Yeah, we about saying? bringing Last people together. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So we, we definitely come in the game different. Y'all, y'all, y'all just made it happen. It's wow. done. Wow, it's gonna happen. That's Watch. faith. That's big. It's gonna happen. I just They're gonna sit down. Man. Cause like we at a whole new day now. It's our time as a race of people to come together and do it like it needs to be done. Yeah. And you might yeah. not see the change right away. It's here. Because the way how life is. We not, might not see it We might time. not see it in our time. And, but, but that would be such, so big for future. For You got to think about our kids' kids. It's not a peak. You got to think about our kids' yeah. kids. No, man. On a real, man. It's, not, it's, it's, it's no, nobody going to lose. It's all, it's, all, it's a win-win situation. Y'all are winners. Like, who losing? Nobody oh, wow. going to lose. It's just a win. A friendly conversation. Wow, let me ask you about this guy that come from down there in New Orleans, who some say is the best rapper alive, man. This guy, some Isn't this that this, notorious A. That that Wayne, that Lil Wayne. I want to talk about Lil Wayne. I want to talk about the fact that <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to talk about Lil Wayne. I want to talk about because these youngsters coming here. Some of the youngsters, you I realize the generational gaps. That's what I look at. I, I've seen different people come in different stages, say different ones the goat. Like if you said, you might say, "Man, who would you say is the goat of rap?" Period. 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 <sighs> If I had to go with one, man, see, that's hard, man. I just asked for one. I don't want no. Man, you got to do it. Well, look, see, you, you I know, I, 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 I'm glad. I'm a, I don't want nobody else one. right now. Just one. That one that you say is the go to rap. KRS one. Wow. I'm going to say Rakim. See, this the thing how I say. You hear what I just said? I heard you say Rakim Cole. <laughs> he Cole. I like the style. He changed the whole style of rap for me. But this, this is how I, this is how I'm, I view rap like that when you talking about battle, you no know, battle rap or whatever and stuff like like that. Okay, like I, I put a post up a, a few years ago. I said Tim Smooth, if I had to make a vote for the best rap out of New Orleans, the representer it'd be Tim Smooth. Because when I say that, and I say KRS One, what I look at, okay, if you set these two rappers down. And you say, okay, these words and these things you can't use. A lot of them are the equation. You can't use kill, you can't use B, you can't use this. A lot of them is out. But see a person like KRS One, Tim, I don't heard them that they can dig in it. What you call them? They can come from all different levels. Angles, yeah. Yeah, even like like um Rock Kim, he good, but KRS One to put out so much of material on so many different levels, you know what I'm saying? He can get on different levels. That's the thing. See what I'm saying? Now, if you just got rappers up there, they can just say anything and do anything. They might say B, 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 10 times. But when you take some stuff out of the equation, say, okay, you got to rap about this, but you can't say this and you can't say that. And you don't That's think Eric, like. Eric, Eric, Eric being rock him would have got around there, man? I, 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 they can rap about saying, a lot of different things, man. I can't, I'm not gonna go there with you. I, I, I can't. I, I ain't let you I win. That easy. I can't say they can't get around it. But Rock Kim I'm was, saying was up dope, against man. KRS One. I think it's gonna be. I rough, love KRS One hey, too. That, hey, bro. I just love the way the he was about the knowledge and the way that he would put things together. So I get but it. You listen to but like style a lot of, wise, He listened to how he rock him style. Yeah, his style. It's cold. Thinking of a master plan? Man. Look, <laughs> I tell you what. You must learn. That what you, you you think about uh, uh love's gonna get you, would you? You seen when he had that battle that on um, verses, huh? You see why yeah. verses? You see what happened, huh? <laughs> huh? You see what happened? Huh? Different on times, real. man. On real. Different times. And that, man. And, 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 and that man right there, he was on stage. Well, that's his boy. And he was, it, 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 uh, hey. He get down too. Big Daddy, Big Daddy can't. Big Daddy can one of the best to do it, man. He get down. I, I love all you know those. That's, that's what but people you can't don't understand. Material, though. I love. You know I, mean? I love those guys because uh, those guys in that era was a different era. Now those are the patriarchs. Now a lot of these new ones that come up under them, and and I got to talk about this because I've been talking about this a lot lately. So y'all got to hear about it. Uh, the way that they, you know, that like I told you during that time, you brought a bus down earlier. People don't think about the, the records and the music that you guys was putting out in the South during this time. They ignore that that phase of, of, of hip hop. Mm -hmm. um, that's why Pimp C called it country rap to him because he was offended by the way they ignored 
what we do down here. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people say, oh man, it's, it ain't like that no more with the internet. Yeah, but it is because you don't hear them bringing those things up until somebody tries to take your song. Yeah, and then you gotta exactly, recognize we exactly, were doing something. So exactly. you were doing something during those times that would have been totally ignored Exactly. But because of what happened with Glorilla, now they got to acknowledge the fact exactly. that in 1990, what, three? Three, exactly. 1993, when you had different things coming out from 8-Ball MJG, from uh, uh, UGK, all that stuff. We was rocking back then, but people, uh, bust down. People yeah, were making music back then. Making you know music, what I'm saying? Making uh, real Big songs. Mike. Big Mike was music. Yeah, Big Mike. Big, mm-hmm. Yeah, Fifth Ward Boys and the Ghetto Boys. Mm-hmm. But when you start talking about top music now, I just don't think they give us the just do. You know what I'm saying? They don't. And, they and, don't. and, and I'll, I'll scream it until they hear me down yeah, here exactly. in the South because it, we had some dope people making that's why music during that like time. It was a rest, rest in peace to Pimp, but that's yeah. why it was. We did a lot of shows back there at um, Club Strawberry with them. You did something with Pimp? We did shows, no. not song. No, 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 Club no. Strawberry. You Wait, met Pimp C? Him and Bum, we, did, we stayed at Club man. Strawberry, man. Yeah, give me a Pimp C something. What did Pimp say to you when he met you? I ain't gonna lie, me and he Pim ain't never, you. he ain't never, I, I, I ain't say, I said we did shows with him. Now, Bum, I talked to Bum a lot. Pim was there, I never had a conversation with him, never did. But, but you did talk to Bum B. Yeah, I don't smoke with Bum and all, I don't <laughs> tell you, so Bum B. <laughs> Oh, so, yeah. It's funny how they, you know, opposites do things together because they were so mm-hmm. different, but yet so close. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, they were. They was they brothers, was. man. Uh-huh. But 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 they were brothers, but they had different ways of doing things, right? They did. They did. Like, we was to do shows after the show, um, Pimp, he'll have females with him. He'd go, you know, to his room or whatever and stuff like that. Bummy, he'll hang out just like he is now. Yeah. You know, he's down already, boom, boom. Dope dude, man. Yeah, 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 I love him. The he's culture, he is the culture, yeah, man. Up, you man. the culture. I uh-huh. love my people down here, man. We're doing our thing. So what about checking in? Do you think that people should check in? I'm going to ask you that question because that's a big thing. With, with When people travel, do you think when I come to your city, I need to check in with Mobile uh, Joe? It wasn't, it wasn't no checking in when I was back in the day. I don't know. Just go wherever? I mean, that's how it was, you know. This, 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 this new stuff that they be doing, man. It just we're starting our own people. Wow, you know what I'm saying? We're starting our and own people. And that's sad, right? Yeah, they they you check it in and you losing people on your own watch. It don't it just wow. You know what I'm that's saying? That's heavy. Just, what you just it said. It don't. It don't make sense. You know what I'm saying? It don't. It don't make sense. You know what I'm saying? I got a question. So, I want you to give me your top three legends. See man, how long? Hold on, hold on. In New Orleans, music. Top three, legends. three legends. Your top three. See some of the people I'm gonna name, y'all. Ain't it don't matter. Name. That's fine. Name it. Well, the first is gonna be Notorious A, the guy I started with. That's hard. That's gonna be my first. You know what I'm saying? Cause like number one, Notorious A. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because like if you go back. Right now, and listen to Portrait of a Villain. Listen to the title. Listen to everything he say. We living it right now. He showed everything in the video. You know what I'm saying? Bam. Wow. Then I'm going to go with... Um, Tim Smooth. Tim Smooth. Shout okay. Out. I'm going to go with Tim. And he from down there. Yeah, Tim, he passed away. Passed away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, um, Tim Smooth. And number three, (sighs) top three legends. Man, I got to say, Folk Child Rules Juvenile. Wow. Because he impacted a lot of people. Like, when you moving around. Say that name again. Folk Child Rules Juvenile. Wow. Like, like everybody be like, you know what I'm saying? Like, the way he delivered his flow is just like, you know what I'm saying? It'd be Nothing like it. And I be trying to get so much more out of him, but yeah, he, he really, yeah, he really liked that. Wow. He really liked and that's that. so crazy because when you think about New Orleans and you think about legends, you know, a lot of people would be looking to hear you say Master P, a Baby, all of them folks, and you, you didn't I mean, you talking about one. legends. He talking about legends. legends. He's legends older, so I, I you talking about, what you, you just talking about said. rappers or you talking about legends? Legends, as, period. Oh, like overall. That's, I'm, I named them as rappers legends as rappers now when you talk about legends 
No, I'm number one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I led the foundation. Man. I led the foundation. I know this. So basically, they didn't, they wasn't, nobody wasn't doing this before you. Mobo Joe, legend. Birdman, second. Matthew P, third. So legend. I, I always thought, See, I always thought thing. P came, I thing. always thought P came before Birdman. Oh. In legend status. No, I ain't talking about legend status. Oh. I'm talking about when it came out. I'm not talking. No. But he, he he took off before Birdman. As far as the priority, the deal, the unit. The, you see what I'm well, saying? Bur yeah, well, uh, P was doing his, his thing independent more. You see what I'm saying? Okay. P had a little leverage on us because he had the California, because that's where he was at. That's correct. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And see, like I'm telling you, if you go back and you check from like 89... All the way probably to like 96 and stuff like that. When you came in that area right there, if it was a, a ghetto boy, if I saw, I had a record store, but I saw a, a Sharani too, Peaches. If they saw one ghetto boys, they saw 20 locals, which could have been Mobile Joe Records, it could have been Cash Money Records, it could have been Big Ball Records, it could have been Untouchable Records, it could have been Slaughterhouse, it could have been No Limit. We were selling. All them, because we had it, what you call them? See what I'm saying? And that's how the deals came about, because Pete was doing independent, because, see, Pete was like me. See, I was crossing state lines. I was crossing state lines before music. You know what I'm saying? Because I was going to the capital mm -hmm. down in Houston. You know what I'm saying? The so, capital. The, the D capital. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was the D capital back then. I know, back then. You know what I'm saying? But so, so I, I was, already, and then he was coming from California, so that's how, that's why my music, got long jeopardy because, you know, boom, boom, boom. But that's what made the majors start looking because they're not missing them sales there. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? That's just like you you got a lot of sales coming in your store and then your sales stop. You know what I'm saying? They going to know. You know, like you got like chain stores. They got these people called troubleshooters. When people stealing money or something happened, they're going to send them troubleshooters. They're going to figure out what's going on. Mm -hmm. And that's when they did. And then it stopped boom, boom, boom. Then I went to jail in 98. You know what I'm saying? And cash money. When they started dropping that BG, volume one, volume two, I was laughing. I said, when I was about to go, I knew it. You know what I'm saying, boy? They were, and, and BG was, boy, you putting it down. And I, I love, I love um, BG music. You uh, you knew Moby Dick, right? I I don't think I never met Moby, but I know of him. Oh, okay. you know what I'm saying? I never. I don't think I. I think I met him maybe like one time. I met Pete like he came in when it, when Pete came back and he was starting to do the music. He came but he was down to do the first dance hall. He came by the store. I met him there. And they had another record store. Honesty was on Canal Street and they had it in character. And I seen him there one day. That's the only time I ever really was in. P company. Moby, I probably met him, you know what I'm saying? I met KL a couple of times, you know what I'm saying? But KL, um, Ruler Juvenile, Little Badness, that's who, you know, KL kind of knew all because he knew his um his daddy or whatever and stuff like that. You know wow. what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. But um, like I say, by me having met Slim and Baby at the studio and seeing each other, that's how we started building. You know what I'm saying? What can you say about Slim? He don't talk a lot. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I found out uh, my book, Secret Minds of a Millionaire, through Slim, just a slight conversation of him talking, and I, I thank him for influencing me with that book. You know what I'm saying? But what can you tell me about this guy who never talks? Good dude. Good, good I've heard dude. that. Good dude. And he always, you know, trying to make sure he help his people, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, to me, my boy Joe, just keep going. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like, people say stuff about Stunner. Man, Stunner, Stunner was cool. Like, I ain't got so nothing So you think bad. he get a bad rap? Because a lot of people talk about Stunner. I'm a big fan. Yeah. I, just, I well, have arguments on here about him. Because yeah. I'm, a, I'm a fan, because well, I know what a boss is. See, it's That's a why the name of the show, Boss Talk 101. But see, the thing about it is different when you do business with a person. All that I did was so the music and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? And I met him, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, we chopped it up several times. So I can't say nothing bad because that ain't my experience with him. You see what I'm saying? The other people, you know, say. But I look at, like, this is how I look at it, right? On the real, like, to me, we all gonna make mistakes. You know what I'm saying? 
And I just listen to what people say. Like I listen to him on one of his interviews. You know what I'm saying? And I don't say nothing bad about people. And he was talking, and um, he said how the thing blew up. Mm -hmm. The music blew up real fast. You know what I'm saying? And it was asking him on what he was different now. He said, man, I got people in place to pay people. Plus he went back and made it right with his guys. You know what I'm saying? Because they're still messing with him. And not only you know they're still saying? messing with him, they all millionaires. They all millionaires. All of them. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, if him and I wouldn't took the chances, it wouldn't be these people. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of my artists like that, you know, they, they think, man, you know what I'm saying? For boom, the same way with him. Like, they see it. You know what I'm saying? But I don't think he deliberately set it out to mess over people, but I didn't do business with him. But my thing is, if you do something wrong, make it right. And in my eyes, the man made it right. Wow. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, now, you might ain't got all your ducks, you know what I'm saying? But you ain't no um, street dude because you lost in the streets, bro. Yeah, yeah. I got millions out there. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And everybody I know, I mean, rest in peace to um the guy from Memphis who got killed. He told you all the time, how much money he had Dolph. on the street. Dolph. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you got to be willing to lose, man, order to win, bro. Wow. That's you big. You know what I'm saying? That's so, so man, heavy. like, I, I can't say nothing bad about them people, man. Man. man I, I, I'm not going to say nothing bad about nobody. No, no, no. You, 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 you know what I'm saying? New Orleans finest anyway. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I said, uh, I think you're a stand-up guy, man. Uh, I... I Pray and hope everything work out for you on that case. Yeah, it's uh, with work your music, out. you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. and, and and whenever they do, make sure you come back on Boss Talk One On One. I want to hear the the, yeah. the, the, the the I want to hear the, the follow up. The follow up. We're gonna do a follow up I'm on. Coming. Yeah, we're I'm gonna coming. do a follow up on the fact of uh, you know. Uh, you know, you got it straight, you know. Yeah, man. Bring your boy a little souvenir or something. You know, I like a uh, little few things every night. Just check <laughs> yeah, my see, style out. You, you know what I'm saying? I got Bring you. me a little shirt or something. Or I don't know. You know, whatever you think, old boy, you know, could use. Well, go on. Go on look, do, do this for me, boss. Go on, give me a sit down with Jigger Man. Uh -oh, Kevin Lyle, and we're gonna be, we gonna be. Hey, give me a sit down you know, with some more go, bosses, and we gonna figure gonna out go some down shit. Through there. You know what I'm saying? A real legend gonna get his ship, man. I, and, I, you say you been, and you say you've been watching Boss Talk. What is it about Boss Talk that you love so much? I like because y'all talk about the real stuff. This is what I'm about. You know what I'm yeah. saying? This growth. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't be trying to go in all that ghetto gossip stuff yeah, like yeah, that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm not in that no more. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I like, you know, the environment. I the feel history, like, man. Yeah, the history, the stuff y'all doing. That's why I, soon when I knew I was coming, I started reaching out. I reached out since last week. Yeah. You know I what I'm saying? I just seen that when and I... Then, like... He um, did it on Instagram. You know, I saw, oh, he did? I just okay, I didn't know. Yeah, I, she, I, I, oh, that's I, who I brought that Instagram. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> she she had an answer back. She had an answer When you see yeah. yeah. that, I see that email pop through. And, and, and um, I work with the... um. Miss Gold do all good in the hood. Her husband is named Eno. He need prayers. He down and stuff. Wow. wow. But um, they've been in the business doing the, the rap TV shows for a long, long time. Wow. And I remember right before he went down, he said, Mo, he said, no matter how big or how small, do the interview. Wow. That's what he told me. That's big. He said, do the interview. And everybody the same size in my eyes. Wow. You know what I'm saying? I like it. So that's why. But I, I rather, appreciate you. You know, I rather you know talk about stuff that can help people. Cause man. like, like I said, the old men in my neighborhood. I, I, I got to tell, like I was on the Dining Show. I kept telling them I was raised by rich black men. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I do this little show called the Lacamo Show to where I just drop different knowledge. And I was trying to find. The I see. Told me that the other week. He what's his name? Hills. Um, I know I caught you off guard. Oh yeah, Lord. I seen Ice yeah. on here too. Yeah, so but Hills was too. uh uh, he it, it, it dropped he dropped daily, jewels daily, daily game. game. So yeah. he dropped jewels yeah. that, like you just said. Yeah. That yeah. one made me think yeah. of. And, and like like I was breaking down because like people see when I went for the lawsuit. So first thing they said, oh he broke, he broke, he broke. Yeah, man, I can work on stuff. I got I got too many ways to feed myself. My whole life, my only prayer in life was freedom, help, and strength. I'm gonna do for me and mine. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I was try I had broke down the difference between having money, being broke, and being rich. It's a difference. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. having money is having money. Because you got 
people that can have money and still be broke. Broke mentality. Broke mentality. You know what I'm saying? So if you can also be rich, where you at? Knowledge, understand? Nobody can't give you that street life no more. Mm -mm. See what I'm saying? So you got people with money that's still broke, that's still doing that. Wow. Because they're not rich and now they, they, they got stuck where they was at. You know what I'm saying? So that's the type of stuff I be really into and I see y'all be really bad, rocking bad, bad. with it. But, but I really appreciate y'all, man. Man, any shout outs? What's up? Tell me what we... the real Boss Talk 101, the legendary Mobile Joe in the building. Wow. Um, like, uh, tell, tell him Instagram, Facebook. My Instagram? Yes, sir. My Instagram is Mobo, M O. B O. That's how you spell it. M O B O Camp C A M P nine zero. Cause I represent the nineties. On YouTube, go follow me on YouTube. YouTube is Mobo Camp Records. That's where all my videos at. You know what I'm saying? I also got the um the Lack of Mo show. And on Facebook, I'm Mobo Joe. Man. M O B O J O E. Man. The pioneer of New Orleans mm -hmm. gangster rap. In the building. Man, you know, questionably, you know, like I said, so it got to me like in the 90s, uh, somebody said that uh, Birdman might have beat you to the draw, but I'm not going to go there with you today. You say he beat me to the draw? <laughs> I, I ain't gonna say some of the stuff I hear. I, I hear that say, but uh, I like to, I like to, I like to have a little set down on Bird, man. Hold on, man. You know what I'm saying? Man, man, man. I, I, was, I was glad for him, though. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't, I ain't, gonna, I ain't, gonna, I ain't gonna lie, man. I'm. I love to see my people win. It doesn't. Man. It doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? I'm still winning too. But look how man, you look, look good, man. You know I just saying? told you that earlier, you know man. I'm about to get my stuff together, <laughs> man. On the real. Check it, man. man. Hey, man. Thank you so much. We love you, man. Thank y'all. Love y'all too, man. Building, man. Thank you for, for coming on our me. show. Man, keep doing what y'all doing, man. Y'all doing some positive stuff. I see big man. things for y'all. I'm real spiritual. You man, know me mean? too, man. Like, I'm mad. Hey, man. Keep pushing. Man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I heard the man. Birdman, they put it in existence over here. Y'all gotta set down. <laughs> Y'all gotta come over about time one on one. And um I might be older than both of y'all too. <laughs> Big brother talking, girl. <laughs> real. Check it, man. Hey, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101 where the bosses talk. You heard me? On the real. <laughs> what? <laughs>